Hi everybody. Today we're going to take a look at uh, an atypical play. Uh, atypical plays require uh, a certain process and if we're all using the same guideline uh, we'll be a little bit more consistent and uh, be able to stay away from uh, bad situations a little bit better. Here we go. Atypical plays uh, for our purposes is going to be one that usually has a a pause or a, a, a point in the game that is going to cause the officials to confer with coaches or each other and you're going to want to take some certain steps to make sure that everybody's in the right place so that uh, we have no issues that arise from that delay. Many times it's in the, uh, following a, uh, a rough play or where you have some tension between players so uh, you're going to want to take certain steps to make sure the game doesn't go sideways and if we have these outlined and defined and, and we know them in advance it's much easier to do this and you are much better prepared to take uh, on these types of plays so in this play here we're going to have a foul and then some pushing and a dead ball foul and we're going to take a look at what the officials do in this case So in this particular play, this is definitely going to be an atypical play because we're going to have the foul first and then the technical. And here we have a hard foul and then a push by the white player. And the first thing we want to notice is we have all three officials being concerned that the game uh, may have some activity that we definitely don't want. But all three officials we can see here um, run into the activity area. And we need to remember we need to have one official that stays back on this perimeter and monitors the uh, bench activity as well as monitors the players and gets uh, information that may need to be exchanged. Or, you know, he has to get color and numbers, make sure that if there's anything that's not diffused, he's keeping track of and again, keeping track of the bench personnel. Second thing we have to do, and it's even more important than the first, but if you're in a crew of three, while the third official is monitoring, these first two officials have to clear the floor of players and direct the players to their benches. This is a must. You're going to have side issues that arise. If you don't, you're going to have other players with looks, taunting, and even maybe some physical activity that you want to definitely avoid. So on this particular play here, our officials start to confer first. And what happens is we have two and 23 here who are going to have some uh, extra words. And that's something that we, uh, we definitely do not want here. So they uh, finally get the players to their bench, which is what we want to do is get these guys all to their bench. Um, and make sure that no, uh, I call it burning embers, restart or rekindle that flame uh, that could uh, make the game go sideways and get uh, in a bad way real quick. The next thing we want to do here is make sure that we get together and exchange information. Uh, even if you don't think you need any additional information, to be cautious, to get it right, to make sure to even allow some time to elapse so that these tempers can uh, uh, get a little uh, more e at ease. You're gonna to wanna to get all the information, exchange it, decide on what the adjudication and the, and the rule is, decide on the resumption of play, and then have our officials go to where those spots are with one of them going to the table and the coaches and the other two should be going to their uh, respective spots on the floor. In this particular case, we have our one official going here to the floor, but we have two going here and here and carrying on a side conversation. And that's not really what we want. We want the, the, the reporting official, when he's done reporting, 
to uh, also inform the coaches and our other two officials should be going to the spots where they're going to be, which should have been decided in the conference that they would have had on or about uh, center court. So in this instance, we have uh, two officials over there, and which is not, this is not an issue uh, to have the two officials. Many times you'll have the referee and the uh, a calling official. If this is the official that made the initial call or the technical, you might have both officials there, the referee and the calling official. However, you don't want to have a very long conversation. This is an information exchange. You don't want to get into the situation where you are debating with them on the calls. The call is what you have made it. You've already reported it, and we need to move on. Exchanging information, listening to the coaches, giving a brief response, and then getting back to the resumption of play. I think these two guys do that very quickly. They listen, they respond, and then they're going to go back to where the resumption of play is. So the coach is going. He's not very happy, but they're going to go. And uh, they do a pretty good job of, of keeping this side. There's a couple of things we could have done better, but remember, uh, some of the things you want to do are, you know, make sure that one referee stays away. Make sure that we are diffusing the situation, sending the players to their bench and making sure they all go to the bench. That's imperative because you will have uh, what I call burning embers, these little these little side uh, flames that might uh, uh, flare up into bigger, bigger problems after you've already diffused the initial problem. Then you want to want to get together away from the benches, probably close to center court, exchange information, cover what you're going to uh, adjudicate and how and where everybody's going to be coming back, report to the table, report to the coaches, and resume play. Thank you for joining in, everyone, and I hope these help. And remember, your work makes the game better.